Hiya, and welcome back to Moonlight Castle. The game that teaches us that... Hmm. Hmm. That Liam, similar to... Roswell, is a little shit who must be dealt with swiftly and... painfully. Also, hiya, welcome, and let's just hop right in. We're, we're glad to have you here. He opened like a cl- <laughs> <laughs> He opened like a clam. Why? Well, thank you for bonking cats. Thank you for bonking him. He opened up like a clam and revealed to me that instinctive fear he'd always lost to. When we were younger, I heard bits and pieces of the things they do while I wasn't around. I thought it was a fantasy, like from a book or something. I assumed they'd read it while she was working. But no, that's not it. That's just what I wanted to believe because I was so goddamn scared of the idea it could have been real. I watched them all leave and couldn't get a single word out. Warning out. Not a sound. It, it adds to this. It, it, it adds to this. Like. <laughs> I needed that. I, I needed that, cats. I, I needed that. I needed you to get blocked by Automod. I actually needed that today. I watched them all leave and couldn't get a single warning out, not a sound. His voice choked, burying himself in those regrets he struggled to keep under control. They'll be fine. Everyone's strong in their own way. Do you think anyone stands a chance against Ryan? Or Dylan? He shifted around, turning his, turning his face to me. And Liam seems to know everything about this place already. You have nothing to be afraid of. We can stay here and wait for this mess to end, then go home. And what about us? I scratched the back of my head, giving him an awkward laugh in response. What about us? I repeated, unsure of what answer I could give him. I can... protect you? That was the perfect cue for my hat to descend from the sky and take me away. Bye, Patrice. Patrice extended his arm and prevented it from kidnapping. I felt vulnerable, completely exposed to him, and in the midst of my shame, I saw a smile take hold. You're, all, you're always so kind. He could kill me just by looking at me that way. We we should focus on you tonight. That's all I wanted to say. Patrice nodded but didn't move. I gave him some space and dragged my chair away. I eyed the bag Liam gave us and took the opportunity to check what he left for us. A rosary? I never thought of Liam as a religious guy. Keep that thing away from me or I'm going to catch on fire. Keep getting distracted, but I feel that on a molecular fucking level. Like, I don't feel it mentally. I feel it in the same way as to how the electrons, protons, and neutrons are fucking kissing or some shit. And that makes my goddamn liver... I- that's how much I felt that. Oh, no, 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 because here's the funny thing. I can actually enter a church without catching on fire. Oh, hi, oh, welcome. Because, like... Whenever I enter a holy place, I fear catching on fire. <laughs> Keep that thing away from me, I'm gonna catch on fire. I laughed and he chuckled back. Random weapons, bandages, random weapons, bandages, rope, food, water. These bandages looked strange, but so did the water. Even if I were thirsty, I wouldn't drink this. It didn't feel safe to consume. It's holy water. What's this? I saw a piece of paper sitting at the bottom, but quickly realized it was a picture when I felt its material in my paws. This crocodile doesn't need a cape. Someone had scribbled on it with a sharpie. That was an iconic line from Crocodile Man. 
a popular superhero I also used to follow years ago. I owned a lot of comics. Then I flipped it around and saw Patrice Liam and his sister posing for a group picture. You must have been teens here. Can I see that? Patrice was now by my side, eyeing the picture I was holding. Hiya. So I handed it to him. It must have been a great memory. Yeah, it really was. Not to brag, but Ryan and I also watched that movie. I'm sure you did. That's all we cared about when we were younger. He pocketed the picture and began stretching his body. Are we doing this then? Yes, I'm ready for this. Liam said that this place is safe, right? Right? Yeah, I think so. If I see something weird, I'll pick you up and flee the scene. I'm glad you won't leave me behind. It's convenient that you're easy to carry around. Crocodile man, crocodile man, does everything a crocodile can. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't because he's a crocodile. Look out. He is crocodile man. These Ryan-esque compliments needed to stop. Anyway, fix that bandage. It's unraveled and it's peeking from the bag. <laughs> this? Oh, sure. He pulled it out to get a better look and froze for a second, coming down to bite your ass and death roll you. Wait, it's not a bandage. Holy shit, Liam remembered. The tree sounded just as emotional as he was while looking at the picture. Remember what? I used to do boxing before, but I didn't think Liam would prepare these for me. His voice then suddenly cut to a giggle as he stared at me. <laughs> it's funny that you could use them for plain vantages. He had a point and laugh at me even while explaining, huh? You actually wrap your hands in them to reduce the damage you take from punching. Oh. Yeah. He didn't seem interested in actually using those bandages, but seeing them clearly affected him in a positive way. So we left the safe room, or that's what I thought, because I quickly realized only I did and... As I quickly realized only I didn't, he just watched me leave. Did you change your mind by any chance? It was time for me to use my secret weapon. I grabbed his hand and slowly encouraged him to follow me. They're holding hands, how scandalous. His blushing told me that this was the right thing to do. Let's go. How scandalous. The lounge welcomed us with its deafening silence, only broken up by the howling wind battering the walls. It's time to drink water. 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 It is. Our paths split, and we could choose either the staircase or moving in a straight line. I didn't dare to suggest either one. Patrice was meant to do that. I'll go for something simple and short. It would be nice to know ahead of time. If only the map could help. Patrice opened it regardless to see if what the others said was tr said earlier was true or not. I think I know what you're going to say, cats. Just don't. They didn't explore much. I'd prefer to explore the ground level. The idea of walking around upstairs and falling through a crack in the floor scares the shit out of me. Sure, maybe we could... A sharp pain suddenly entered my head, breaking my thoughts and stunning me for a few seconds. Patrice held, heard my whimpering and came to see what was going on, but I was too focused on fighting the pain to speak. It felt like a foreign object was slowly pushing itself inside of me and it hurt so much. Did you get sick again? That's so weird. Did it happen in the same place again? Color me surprised. I'm... I'm fine! The pain was still there, but after the surprise attack wore off, I learned to tolerate it. I should have taken some painkillers with me. Something was watching us somehow in the midst of the pain I could feel it. Why did you return? To see you, bitch. My headache began fading, and I instinctively turned my face towards the unknown voice, or at least to the direction I heard it come from. Are you looking for something? I was hesitant about relaying this information to Patrice. The last thing he needed to hear was there, there was a strange voice speaking to me from the ceiling. Didn't you hear anything? Patrice shifted around a little embarrassed. Did he hear the voice then? His reaction, the emotion he was displaying, it didn't make sense. You will regret this. The voice spoke one more time, but I couldn't quite find its location. The sound was basically everywhere all at once, echoing across the room until it fully disappeared. Was that a hallucination? I'd never had one before, but it felt so real. I shouldn't have been able to hallucinate a voice I've never heard before. Hiya. Patrice? What did you hear exactly? At first glance, I thought we heard the same thing, but his attention was gone. Why are you asking me? Didn't you hear that... Carillon 2? He heard a music box? Um... No. I didn't hear that at all. The fact that we could hear two completely different things and not acknowledge the other was strange. Try focusing a bit more. It's a faint sound and talking only makes it harder to detect. 
I would have noticed already. Being in his place was enhancing my concentration for some reason, and not even the pain seemed to stop that. It's really nice. I'm feeling way better now. I guess if this strange sound was helping him, I didn't see any harm in him clinging to it. We're picking this hallway, right? He walked ahead without letting me agree to it. Uh, don't you need help? Be careful! I was impressed by his initiative, but he shouldn't push himself so hard. I'm all good. Whoa! Wow, I can't see anything. He was glued to a window, commenting out loud like he was talking to himself. A fog enveloped the castle, blocking the view and distorting our depth perception. I couldn't see anything past my nose, just a dense smoke created by that earlier rock slide. My knowledge here was lacking, but I assumed this would have cleared itself by now. I felt anxious, knowing that climbing out through the windows didn't look safe either. I wondered if he came to the same conclusion. We have to go deeper inside, then. He kept going like a careless child, humming a tune as he started checking all the doors around us. You're gonna die, Patrice. You're gonna die. That is how you die, my friend. That is how you die. Yes! He kept going like a careless child, humming a tune as he started checking all the doors around us. I was growing concerned about his sanity. Patrice, can we talk for a second? Hmm? What's up? Don't take this the wrong way, but you're acting weird. He giggled, but that wasn't a joke. I was dead serious. Why do you say that? Because I'm not shitting my pants right now? Yes. Is that what you think Patrice should be doing? I felt off for saying that. I didn't mean to offend him, but his words cut me deep. That didn't change the fact that there was something eerie about him. He didn't get upset. He didn't yell, raise his voice, or get worked up about it. He just... smiled. Nothing more, nothing less. This is not our Patrice. Where is the real Patrice, you goddamn ghost? Where is the real Patrice, you goddamn ghost? Or I swear to God, I will... Uh... I will... Fucking... Poke you in the eyeball... And make sure that you commit vertical tortilla chip. It was as if he was only capable of displaying positive emotions. I'm sure one of these doors will open eventually. Let's not give up. Hearing him speak was sending chills down my spine. Something really uncanny was happening right in front of me. And that might have been creepier than any mysterious voice. So, um, how do you feel? I feel great. I've never felt this good before even. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I really, really wanted to be happy as well, but tonight, that was the first time in my life that hearing something like this gave me discomfort. Yes. It was wrong. So wrong. Oh, this one opened! He launched himself inside without a second thought, and I chased after him like a worried parent after their child. What looked like an average door led us to the biggest room I've ever seen. I genuinely gasped, feeling like an ant in a world of giants. Books, as far as the eye could see, filled every single corner of this library. So much so, there were many on the floor as well. I looked up, toward the ceiling. It felt so high and out of my reach that it could have been compared to the sky. Tiny stars were painted up there. I'm sure Blake would like it. It was an impressive room, old, dusty, but gorgeous in its own way. The erosion of time was... The, only, the erosion of time only added more charm to it. That was a big deal, coming from someone who avoided these places because of school. You know what? You know what? You know what? We gotta test this. We gotta test this. Cats, can you tell whether or not this is the real Patrice? Because... <laughs> Because, like, I, I swear to God, all these characters, you know them more than they know themselves in every single way imaginable. That was a big deal, coming from someone who would have avoided these places because of school. Patrice. I scouted my surroundings looking for him, but I couldn't see him. What a hassle. I didn't think he'd leave me behind, and I wouldn't have minded being told beforehand about his intentions. It started to feel like I didn't exist anymore. A sigh escaped me. Maybe he was looking for clues and didn't hear me. 
This is the place Clyde wanted to find. Would I meet him there? Here? I figured I should also investigate and learn more about this castle. I picked up a random book from the floor and opened it, curious to learn about anything, honestly, or see what kind of knowledge is worth being stored here. Huh. Blank. There was nothing here. All the pages were empty. I closed it. Maybe the title would... I just noticed the book had no title either. Whatever. I tried again. Same result. Okay, fine. I won't bother to open books I find on the floor. I walked to the bookshelf and randomly picked one out. At this point, I only cared about finding a book with actual words in it. What the hell? I just remember that Ryan mentioned this to me earlier this morning. He didn't lie. All, were all the books blank then? Why? Who in their right mind would stack so many empty books? Cursed. Fear quickly settled in. I was alone and another voice was ringing in my head. I didn't know where it was coming from, but saying, but staying out in the open seemed like a bad idea regardless. These bitches empty yeet, yes. Where the fuck was Patrice? Went behind a bookshelf and ducked down as much as I could, hoping that would be enough to avoid the voice somehow. Books. Cursed. The voice spoke again in his deep, mono monotonous pitch straightened all, straightened all of my fur up like electricity. Hi... How are you? Can I get you some water? Wait, do ghosts even drink water? Can I offer you some oxygen? In mere moments, I found myself in front of a floating, semi-transparent thing. It happened so fast, I fell on the floor and all I could do was stare at that blue glowing... ghost? He didn't do anything and watched me up close. Or was he even watching? I couldn't see his face at all. Ghost rock. What? I don't know what that is. Oh god, there's gonna be a ghost hands moment. The fuck is ghost hands? What the fuck is ghost hands? Oh! <laughs> I didn't realize. Thank you for telling me. Monosodium glutamate. The funny blue website. I didn't realize that. Thank you for telling me. I should have known. I should have known. I should have known and yet I didn't. God damn it. Something was definitely there and I could feel him eyeing me. But it looked more like a mannequin than a real person. Curse it. Careful. The shock slowly faded away when I picked up on some sort of concern coming from this entity. I wasn't sure what he meant at all. His glowing blue aura was mostly giving off sadness. Which confused me more on how I could understand that at all. But like, if most of the content is here in this castle, then it makes sense. Now don't yell at Pac. <laughs> don't yell at him. <laughs> because that was fucking hilarious. I, I needed that. I needed that laugh. Thank you. His glowing blue aura was mostly giving off sadness. <laughs> which confused me more on how I could understand that at all. Oh, okay. Liam's book did say these ghosts weren't aggressive and you could technically interact with them. But that was not the point. Anyone would freak the fuck out seeing a ghost and... Damn! It actually existed. So, um... Hello! I felt so stu- Hiya. I felt so stupid. This was not the moment for my social anxiety to take over. Hello? No, you weren't supposed to play along with me. I needed to say something meaningful and skip the formalities. Finding Patrice was my priority. 
Have you seen a tiger entering this room? We came here together, but now he is gone. The ghost didn't reply, but I came to the realization that this one seemed to struggle with speech. He started floating away, and I scrambled to get up to follow him. Drax is secretly the ghost. Oh, oh, I read that wrong. Drax is secretly the ghost. The ghost brought me to a ladder hidden behind one of the bookshelves, then moved upward. I was a bit worried about this. He obviously wanted me to follow, considering he took his, the time to show me this. It's old. Who knew if this could hold me properly? He seemed to be waiting for me on the upper level, so I swallowed my fears and climbed. I had never been happier to be lightweight. Fuck, now I was also giving myself the Ryan treatment. Ha! <laughs> I'm here. Keep going. The wooden plank squeaked and creaked as I walked after the ghost. Looking down below, I wondered if falling from this height meant dying immediately. Oh no. I pushed those intrusive thoughts away and soldiered on. Tiger. He stopped in front of yet another bookshelf, but this one had many of its books removed, hastily dumped on the floor. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I didn't even need to look further in to hear Patrice giggling. His voice was coming from behind the shelf? I stuck my head through the gap and found what looked like an empty, like a little empty room, a hiding spot of some sort. He was laying there holding a book and reading it and giggling again. Okay, I could now officially declare him insane. Patrice? Joel, hey, you found me! The attention he gave me was short-lived as he quickly shifted it toward the blue ghost next to me. Oh no, wait. I was so overwhelmed I'd forgotten to tell the ghost to hide. Patrice was totally going to lose it. If he had a bit of sanity left in that head of his. He's so shiny! What? <laughs> the hunky, shy doggo- Oh, Lucas! Who's Lucas? Oh! 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 Sorry, sorry, took me a minute. Sorry, took me a minute. I am so sorry. Lucas. Love him to death. He moved past me and began poking the ghost, but his finger just phased right through it, leaving a tiny hole that the ghost aura filled with its blue mass. It feels cold. I can't touch you. That's impossible. Patrice would never do that. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. He was saying that again, but I couldn't pinpoint what was cursed. The castle itself? This room? The books? Patrice? Patrice? Stop doing that. It's rude. Fine, I'll go back to reading that book then. I want to see what happens at the end. I watched him return to where he was and resume his reading. That book, though. It was empty, just like the others. It was a good chance the ghost was calling both the books and Patrice cursed. I... I didn't know what to do. Sacrifice. Offering. Escape. It was words alone sent shivers down my spine. It was vague, but I understood that danger was coming our way. Patrice, enough! Oh, you missed my old model? Here's the thing. I still have the old model. I still have all the models except V2. Like, let me, let me, let me show you all. Let me show you all. Like, I still got the models. Like, here we got, a uh, V1. No, there's V3 and V1. Plus the Scar and Sam model. But yeah. We're gonna stick with this one for a while. I might, I might actually change it soon. The Theta Collection. He gave me one confused look and promptly ignored my pleas. Wait, did I minimize that properly? Yeah, I did. We need to go back to the safe room now. Why? Nothing happened. We're j no, keep me out of that fucking jar. Keep me out of the jar. Keep me out of the jar. Please. No! No! 
please keep me away from the jar. I don't need to relive 2011. I don't need to relive 2011. Please keep me out of the jar. Why, nothing happened. We're just having fun and this ghost is friendly, right? Yes. This one is. But will they all be friendly? Collect all Thetas and you get a Jame kid. Oh no. Get a Jame kids. What happened in 20... I... I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Pack, you seem to know what... You seem to know what I'm talking about. Can, can you explain... The jar in 2011. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no. Keep keep Pandora's box closed. I'll I'll explain it. I will I'll explain it in the Discord server. I will explain it. Yes, this one is, but will they all be friendly? Yes! That one. Why are you trying so hard to kill my good vibes? Don't you see that I'm finally handling myself and I'm not scared? Yeah, we should not discuss this in stream. I, I, I might actually get banned. Shouldn't you be proud of me for succeeding? Of course I am, but this place is dangerous and you're underestimating it. I can handle myself. As long as I can hear this music, I feel like I can do anything I put my mind to. The music that... Thing he mentioned before going insane. Shit, I shouldn't have ignored that issue. Patrice, listen to me. You're not being yourself right now. It's not just about overcoming your trauma. I truly don't recognize you anymore. What are you talking about? This is the real Patrice, the one without burdens holding him back. This was different. This was wrong. Something about this was frightening. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and block that. Because no. No cats. That is allowed. This was different. This was wrong. Something about this was frightening. I want to I want to go back to the safe room. <laughs> We can't do that yet. I'm not feeling well. Please. I caught a moment of hesitation that faded away just as fast as it came. It's nearby. You should go back on your own. It's true that I was lying. Would he have said the same in a different situation? Okay. Better put... Put it in the server. Or better yet, I'll put it in the server. Would he have said the same in a different situation? I see. I was inside a cage now, completely isolated from everyone. I felt powerless. He refused to communicate with me, basically abandoning me. And I didn't have the necessary strength to take him by force. My head began pounding. Not only did I feel an unbearable amount of pain, but knowing that Patrice wasn't going to listen to me was rubbing salt in the wound. Can you at least stay here? I was going to push the bookshelf back in its original place and close us in. Nah, I just remember that we should keep looking for her. Are you serious right now? Was he doing this on purpose or what? Patrice dropped his book and headed toward the exit, only for the ghost to stand in the way. Hide. Shit, I didn't have much time left. Please cooperate with me just this once. I'll do anything you want afterward. I reached for his hand only for him to smack mine away. No! You listen to me! I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being treated this way! Why can't I be considered your equal? I'm just like you, so stop putting me underneath you! Leave me alone, I'll do what I want! He barged through the ghost, ignoring my calls, so I gave chase, hoping to set the record straight. I wasn't trying to do that at all. My words, my good intentions, my concerns, everything was being distorted by him and taken the wrong way. Okay, I'm gonna see what that is. I'm, I'm going to explain this real quick. V 
verifying OneDrive. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Drax. Oh, thank you. But yeah, I just explained it. There you go. My words, my good intentions, my concerns. Everything was being distorted by him and taken the wrong way. I'm just trying to help. I swear. Fuck off OneDrive. I'm, I'm clicking for you to fucking go away. OneDrive. Go away, OneDrive. I'm just trying to help, I swear. That's what they all say. Patrice jumped off the platform and used another bookshelf to land on the ground, avoiding the ladder entirely. Fuck, I couldn't replicate that. Don't leave! I shouted one last time before watching him leave the library. I didn't have the luxury to stand by and hope for him to miraculously change his mind. I prodded myself to action, rushing toward the ladder to make my descent. Too slow, it only took him a few seconds to drop down. But I had to take a single step because I lacked the strength to avoid injuring myself. The pain was increasing, which also slowed me down. There was a chance Patrice took the opposite route, the safe path back to that dining hall. That was just wishful thinking on my part. I braced myself and walked toward the danger head on. My worst fear soon became reality as I started hearing metallic noises. Sounds that I attributed to a fight. Then I heard Patrice's voice deeper in the hallway. Dude, what the fuck? Are you out of your mind? Put the thing down! A rusty, bloody armor covered the knight's entire body as he dragged a giant sword across the hallway. He left pools of blood wherever he stepped. His breathing was deep and labored, exuding genuine pain every time he inhaled more oxygen. Sinners. He whispered other words to himself, but the sword made too much noise to distinguish anymore. The knight raised his sword and attempted to cut Patrice in half, but Patrice jumped back. Yo! This is crazy! Are you even listening to me? It was thankfully a slow swing due to its size, but that didn't stop the knight from trying again. One hit was all he needed to kill Patrice. I'm not a bad guy. Stop. We can talk now. Uh, sorry for entering your castle. The tiger couldn't get any sort of response from him. Patrice! He backed away from the knight and made his way to me. So. About what I said before. I get it, but we need to run. Gain some distance, then hide. Patrice grabbed me and dodged yet another swing. This dude ain't a ghost, though. I couldn't tell that for certain because the knight was projecting a shadow under his feet. But right now, did it really matter? Ghost... Ghost or serial killer, the most important thing was to lose him. Is he running too? Therese wasn't in the position to look, so I did. He's not, that's good. I watched as the knight lifted his sword up in the air, making the scariest motion I'd ever seen. Get back in the library, now! Therese finally remembered how to feel scared again when my scream injected him with adrenaline. He swung the door open and threw us both inside. It caught a small glimpse of the sword flying through the hallway before the door closed shut. Help me push this bookshelf for me! I wanted to help, but I was struggling to stand on my feet. That encounter left me with a strong headache that didn't leave, but only grew more and more painful. There were no words to properly describe these feelings. Something was inside my head trying to break free, and it hurt so much. Doesn't matter, I guess! He dumped the closest bookshelf against the door, hoping that it would slow down the night, but then what? We basically trapped ourselves. Hide. Hurry! The ghost came back, quickly floating toward the high ground to ask us to use that as a hiding spot. I stumbled toward the ladder and came to the realization that I couldn't climb it. I was going to slip and fall. The door was shaking. We could hear the knight's voice from the hallway, wailing, growing more and more upset. At that moment, Patrice swept me off my feet and placed me on his back. Can you hold on to me? I'll get us both up. I didn't exactly have a choice in the matter. I did as he asked and wrapped myself around him. That was easier than trying to coordinate my body to climb. He didn't wait for me to get off and simply carried me all the way to the hiding spot behind the bookshelf. We barely made it inside before we heard a loud crash, the door giving out. Patrice made sure we were out of view, then we curled up in the deepest corner, waiting for waiting in silence for the night to leave. Another blood-curdling scream filled the room. It was so loud I whimpered in response, only to hold my mouth shut and stop the noises. He was directly below us, moving around and slowly walking through the shelves. Each step he took made us more uncertain about our own survival. My anxiety skyrocketed, mulling over the simple fact that we could die right now. And then I heard the sound of destruction. Something was being broken, torn to pieces. I came to the realization that he didn't know where we were, but was actively looking for us. The floor was shaking. I didn't feel safe, but all I could do was wait for the worst to come. This feeling of powerlessness was eating me alive. It reminded me of how my life had always been, but 100 times worse. In this darkness, I couldn't see anything, not even Patrice, who was next to me. I hoped he was handling it better than I was. Then his hand found mine, seeking comfort. He tightened his grip whenever the night felt closer. 
We couldn't speak, but I wish we but I wish he would. I really needed some encouragement right now. Then the room quieted down. All the sounds we were hearing, his screaming, mumbling, gone. I didn't know what to do. Was it safe to come out? Did he give up? But why? He had us cornered. Maybe he was waiting for an ambush somewhere nearby? My head didn't hurt as much anymore. The pain was slowly settling down. Stay there. I'll take a peek. He whispered and I reluctantly let his hand go. Would have preferred waiting a little longer, but I couldn't articulate that thought. I was still overwhelmed by the whole situation. Looks safe, but careful where you step. The knight didn't locate us, but he sure had tried to. Most of the shelves were on the floor, pushed or broken or cut in half. The same fate was also delivered to the books themselves, with their papers now scattered around and covering most of the floor. We have a problem. I moved towards Patrice, who was holding what was left of the ladder we used to get here in the first place. Shit. My eyes searched the floor below for any leftovers we could have used, but I couldn't find anything but tiny pieces. We're stuck? I certainly couldn't make this jump. I would break a bone, or worse. The knight must have destroyed the ladder without noticing it while rampaging in the room. We can find a solution. Wait here. If only I could have climbed down the same way Patrice did. I watched him lean over the edge, reach for the wall, and use a bookshelf as a makeshift ladder. The hardest part seemed to be jumping and grabbing the edge properly. Failing that would be life-threatening. I, I can't do that! You won't. I watched Patrice reach the floor below and then walk underneath me. Jump. I'll catch you. Are you crazy? That's a terrible idea. You won't feel a thing. I'm going to cushion your fall. Where's the bag? Don't we have anything useful in there? A rope, for example. Oh, yeah, where is it again? I remember carrying it before. I searched the area and dug through the debris, wondering if it got buried somewhere, but it was in vain. I must have dropped it when the knight attacked me. Who is that guy anyway? It gave me the same feeling the other ghost did, but I preferred to keep this information myself. I don't know, and I don't plan on finding out either. Fair enough, but he's not a ghost. So that's way less scary and easier to handle. I very much disagreed on that, but I wouldn't argue. I think you can go and fetch our bag? Yeah, it should be in the hallway. Are you sure you don't want to jump? Nuh uh. You can trust me. I said I'll catch you. All you need to do is let yourself fall. I looked at the depth one more time to picture a possible success in my head. It seemed possible, but he didn't act strange tonight. I was tired, and so was he. All it would take was one mistake for me to hit the floor. He was allowed to look as confident as he wanted, but I'm sure this didn't leave him unfazed. I was scared something might go wrong, and he wasn't exactly winning my trust back. That's why the rope was the safest choice, but I understand his hesitation about it. I wouldn't want to meet that guy again either. What are you doing? He was making a weird face and my concerns for his health were increasing. Don't you hear that? I didn't need any more insanity in my head. It's that music again, but it's louder. It all started with that stupid Carolyn. If I could get my hands on it, I'd smash it. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that whoever's making this clearly knows what I like. It's perfect for me. There's so much love in it. This has to be Liam's sister. She must be calling for me. What are you talking about? You have no evidence to back that up. Evidence? Are you joking? We're in an abandoned castle. We saw a ghost and some weird guy trying to kill me. True, in this place, nothing made any sense. That's because we had yet to figure it out, right? Do I seriously need evidence so my skeptical friend will believe me? I believe you. I do. I'm serious. That's why I'm telling you to wait before jumping to conclusions. Don't you find it strange how you're the only one hearing it? Shouldn't I be able to hear it too? He crossed his arms, frustrated with my questioning. What you really wanted to say was that, since you're the medium and I'm a nobody, it's weird that I'm hearing anything at all. I wasn't trying to trample over his feelings, though. I don't know, Patrice. The truth is that I don't know anything, but I'm trying to keep you safe. He smiled almost unnaturally. I'm fine, Joel. Don't you see how I'm doing? I'm handling it all just fine. Then he grew upset like he had just remembered how to. I know what you've been thinking ever since I mentioned that Carillon to you. You're just like the others. Another smile, the biggest one I've ever seen from him yet. She's been reaching out to me because I'm the only one who can help her. I will save her, and once I'm done with that, we'll come back to you. He took a step back, giving up on the original idea in favor of his new crazy plan. You can wait for me here. It looks safe enough, as long as you stay inside. I lunged, for I lunged forward to the edge. Fueled by the realization of potentially being abandoned. No, Patrice! Don't you dare leave me here! We have to stick together! Hey! I couldn't move. Nobody was here to catch me if I were to fall now. Don't worry, I'm not leaving you behind. It would just be smarter to get her help. I changed my mind! I'll jump! Turn back! Get me down! I'll come with you! We can find the source of this music together! Patrice, I'm scared! I don't want to be alone! Silence. He was gone. 
Whatever that music was, it had managed to manipulate him into leaving me behind. Still, I was more concerned about him than myself. If that was their objective, then he was the one in more danger. I needed to get down somehow. I needed to catch up with him. I needed to stop him from falling victim to something evil. There was no path left for me to take. I could only jump. I'd have to try, even if I hurt myself. Another losing battle, huh? And here I was, still fighting, not wanting to give up. Reached for the edge and lowered myself down, my body now dangling in the emptiness as I glanced below my feet. Yeah, it was going to hurt. I started swinging, trying to get some momentum. I was hoping to decrease the damage by using physics to my advantage. I would spread out the kinetic energy by rolling rather than splattering on the ground. I was fucking scared and I didn't want to let go. Who the fuck would do that in this situation? My hands were growing tired of holding my weight, injecting me with that bit of insanity I was missing. I launched myself backward and hit the floor. It fucking hurt. I rolled across the floor and crashed into a bookshelf, just like I had planned. Ow, ow, ow! I crawled away from the wreckage and sat down. I could feel my whole body burning, with cuts and bruises across my hands and legs. Then I stood up and yelped when I managed when I attempted to get, put my weight on my right foot. My ankle was hurting. I couldn't tell if it was sprained or worse, but I, sure, but I was sure as hell I couldn't run anymore. Now I really regret not jumping when I had the chance. It wasn't super bad, actually. It could have gone way worse, since I at least was able to walk, just carefully avoiding the parts where the pain spiked. I limped forward, dragging my foot along and using the wall to support myself. This sucked. I should have turned around and headed back to the safe room, but I had a bad feeling that I needed to give chase. Our bag was laying on the ground exactly where Pachis had dropped it. He couldn't have missed it. He saw it and deliberately chose to ignore it. I really wanted to give up on him. That was the final blow for me. He didn't deserve my help. What happened to you? I did nothing wrong, did I? I knew that wasn't the real you. I knew you were kind, sensible, and sweet. That's why I shrugged it all off and continued walking, even if it hurt. It did hurt everywhere. But I knew it would hurt more if I gave up on you. At the end of the hallway, I found no door but a hole surrounded by vines. I didn't need to think twice about what this location was, and I could see a vibrant flora through the circular passage. The wilderness had completely claimed this place. I noticed that the overgrown plants and trees took over every nook and cranny this room had to offer. My body experienced some well-deserved relief and peace of mind as I walked through the greenhouse. This fresh air filling my lungs almost convinced me I was outside. Patrice, are you here? No reply, just the wind blowing around me and the crickets chirping in the background. I came across a small pond and took a second to stare at my own reflection in the water. My face was covered in small cuts, so I sat down and washed the dried blood off. I guess that looks better. I didn't believe my own words, but I kept pushing a positive attitude. Then I noticed something in the water. I wasn't sure what it was. I was tired and my vision got a bit blurry due to exhaustion. Aren't you going to save him? A voice whispered in my ear, provoking me to do something. That cold remark gave me a burst of fear, which in turn energized me to focus my sight deeper in the water. I audibly gasped as I could vaguely see a man's shape sinking into the water. He seemed to be holding something, but aside from that, he wasn't moving a muscle. My mind received another round of adrenaline as I sprung up. Patrice, holy shit! I jumped in without thinking twice. I didn't know what else I was supposed to do. Part of me hoped he was still alive and had simply lost consciousness. Then I came across a much more sinister truth. I was the only one in the pond. That couldn't be possible. I saw him. I clearly saw him here. I looked around desperate to locate him before things could get worse, but I couldn't. Did the voice trick me? I was too tired to think about the situation rationally. Fuck, I was running out of air. I swam upward back to the surface, but I couldn't reach it. It was right there, but it felt as though I wasn't moving. No, 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 this couldn't be happening. I moved my whole body forward, using all of my strength in a desperate attempt to get out and save myself. I couldn't hold it anymore. Water began filling my lungs and my body froze as I ultimately lost control of it. <laughs> I was dying. That was it. I was done. My life flashed before my eyes, reminiscing on the past and thinking about my achievements, my friends, and everything else now was slipping away from my paws. I am... Ryan! I, I didn't want to die. I want to do so many things with you with Patrice. I, I wanted to be happy. I was so tired of fighting a losing battle. I'm sorry for letting you down. Don't you dare die on me! Before I could fade away, I saw his hand reaching forward, grabbing my wrist and pulling me out. Ryan placed me flat on the ground, calling my name and freaking out with Clyde on his side rushing to my aid. The dragon quickly instructed Ryan to place his hands on my chest and push while he pinched my nose, opened my lips, and breathed into them. 
My body jerked forward, reacting to those things I began throwing up. I gasped for air like I thought I never would. Like I never thought I would. Then coughed so badly my throat activated my gag reflex over and over. Torture. This was torture. You can do it. Please live. He was crying. I wanted to reassure him, but nothing in my body was working. The fact that I was breathing was a miracle in itself. You have to focus on your breathing. Your coughing is blocking you from inhaling oxygen. So hard to execute that. I managed to get some air in. Then my throat continued its coughing fit. Okay. Good. Keep doing that. If you manage to get more air through, then you should be out of danger for now. I didn't know what he meant with for now, but I survived and that's all I cared about. Ryan reached out for a hug only for Clyde to stop him. Hold that thought. Joel hasn't fully recovered, so please wait for his breathing to stabilize first. I was given a few mo minutes to get myself together, but at this point it was just a facade. Scared when I saw you in that pond. You weren't moving, and I thought... He squeezed me, mumbling more words that were choked by the tears he was pouring on my back. I gently reassured him in response, apologizing for what he had to witness. What happened? You have to tell us because Patrice is nowhere to be found. I took my time explaining our entire journey to them. There was no energy left in me after all that. Does that mean Patrice is also... I don't know. I... I wish I could tell you. Clyde pondered on the situation for a bit, then unzipped his bag to use the cursed book. Maybe I can track him down with this. With that? Aren't those books empty? Not exactly. He used it to locate you, but don't ask me how. I have no clue how that stuff works. I'm not entirely sure myself either. It's more of a feeling kind of thing. But I can tell you that this book is alive. And I'm just following its directions. That was weird, but not the weirdest thing I've seen tonight. So you don't have to be a medium to wield something occult-related. I watched him shove his hand into the pages as if to touch something. I was still on the ground, so I didn't have the best view myself. Here, I'll carry you. I would have declined, but I didn't want to slow them all down. There you go. Just relax in my hold now. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Don't say it like that. I feel a presence nearby, but it's not moving, just like before. I gulped and watched Ryan in horror with that statement hanging in the air. We managed to rescue Joel, so maybe we can do it again? I hope so too. Let's hurry. Clyde guided us to a similar looking hole in the wall, but I believe this one to be a tad bigger. This time we didn't have to venture too deep to find an unlocked door that someone had left open, clearly with the intention to be found. Clyde stopped in front of it. It's here. Ryan gently lowered me down next to the wall. I'll go ahead and see what's in there. I pushed myself up, forgetting about my ankle and whining in response. I- Fuck! I'm coming as well. You can't. I wish I could show you how bad you look. Clyde will take care of you. Ryan left and Clyde crouched down to check my foot. When did this happen? In the library. I gave him a brief description of what happened as he pressed around to understand what kind of injury this was. Does it hurt if I do this? Yes! Yes it fucking does! My bad. Don't enter the room! A panicked voice reached us, alarming both Clyde and me. Do you need help? No! That quick, that quick response only pushed me to try to figure out what was happening. I stood up. He asked us to stay here. I don't care! I walked along the wall, limping forward only for Clyde to come to help me get into the room myself. Oh, shit! Clyde gasped as we watched the lifeless body of our friend chain to a pair of columns. Ryan, who had been trying to set himself free, realized we were there and screamed at us to leave. I thought I didn't Emotional have it in me anymore, damage. but I quickly realized how wrong that was when tears formed in the corners of my eyes. Ryan. No, don't say it! He's alive! I know he is! He can't possibly be- He fell to his knees, sobbing for the loss of his friend. I couldn't watch this. The more I stared at that wound in Patrice's abdomen, the more I watched those eyes that were once so bright and full of life, the bigger the hole in my heart grew. In my chest grew. We were always losing, weren't we? The moment I believed change was coming my way, I was once again proven wrong by that cold, harsh truth. The door suddenly closed so hard against his frame that it freaked us out, more so than the darkness we were suddenly thrown in. Then I heard those familiar metallic footsteps coming my way. His labored breathing and menacing aura approached me. I didn't move a muscle. I was done. This was my limit. Joel! 
One final trauma was thrown my way when Ryan wrapped himself around me, shielding my body from the night's slash. Instead of dying instantly, I was sent flying, only to lose consciousness the moment I hit the wall. I felt someone's gentle hands shaking me. As my mind focused back onto reality, a voice came through the darkness, one I longed to hear again. There he was, calling my name with Cory, causing me to slowly return to the world of the living. Bro, wake up. I don't remember him being such a heavy sleeper. Uh huh? I opened my eyes, and upon meeting Patrice's, my body instinctively reacted and grabbed his face with both hands. What? What are you doing? For some reason, I felt really angry looking at him. Don't, I don't, I didn't understand why, but I wanted to just stretch his face a little bit. Dude. That hurts. He complained, but didn't stop me from pulling his cheeks. I continued until I felt satisfied and pushed him forward into a hug as a compromise for my mischief. Did you have a nightmare or something? You look so messed up. Here, clean those tears. I moved Patrice away upon receiving a tissue and touched my face. He was right. I did cry. For some reason, I felt like I cried a lot already. What happened? I feel as though something important transpired and I should have remembered it. Got a tattoo? That's so cool! I didn't think you were the kind of guy to get one. What are you talking about? He pointed at the hand holding the tissue and I saw a strange black circle around my wrist. The same size of a bracelet. Ryan and I looked at each other and shrugged. It couldn't have been a tattoo. I didn't even like tattoos. Tried rubbing it off. Maybe Liam inked my arm because he's stupid like that. Nope, this shit wasn't coming off. I don't know what this is, but I'll take care of it when I get home. Everyone's waiting for us, so shall we? Right, I must have fallen asleep while reading Liam's book. I walked out and stretched a little. There was a strange smell in the air I couldn't quite define. Ryan waited for everyone to exit the car before locking it. I took our bags and passed it to Patrice. We gotta walk through that forest, huh? It's an awkward trail. Very easy to lose your footing and hurt yourself. Stay close to Don, then. He can easily hold you. This conversation, I could swear I'd heard it before, but that's not possible. That's one serious face you got there. Do you need help? I'll have you know I'm quite the, ex the expert hiker. No, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. That one didn't feel familiar, but somehow I was aware of what he was capable of. That now must have disoriented me more than I gave it credit for. We walked through the main path and reached the old campfire site. This place felt nostalgic for some reason. It's only been a one day, yet I, yet it didn't feel like that at all. I was following everyone else on autopilot, not really thinking about anything in particular. The forest wasn't the problem at all. It was almost as if I knew where I could walk without sliding off the edge. That smell I felt before was stronger, but somehow I wasn't bothered by it. I considered asking Patrice about it, but I held my tongue. I didn't want to scare him. The old rusty gate was just a few steps away, so we all took a small break to rest and gather up. I was happy to see Blake approaching Clyde to check on him. It's always hard to keep pretending to be upset. When you love your friends, those negative feelings never last too long. How are you feeling? All good! I can keep going! I walked up to the main group but slowed down in my tracks to observe Dylan and Liam instead. <sighs> they were usually a bit further away from us while staying in close proximity. Dylan was holding his nose, just like I was before. He must have been feeling it as well. You guys aren't catching your breath. Let's get inside already. Liam was growing impatient, just like last time. It was the only occasion where I've ever seen him truly upset. The castle's towers were now fully visible as we got closer to the main entrance. I remembered that old fountain full of debris, built exactly in the middle of what could have been a small plaza of the past. I stopped at the board and looked behind me. Everything was fine. Was I trying to find anything? I'm being so weird tonight. I moved inside last and closed the door. It's early, but we're going to leave off here tonight. Kind of want to extend Patrice. Because I fucking love it. I fucking love his route. I'm kind of scared to do Ryan. Kind of scared to do Ryan's. And also, I kind of want to hang out in the Discord server. I kind of want to hang out and talk. So yeah, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.